Oh, Merle Haggard, where do I even begin? You could talk about the insane popularity and respect he earned as a songwriter and performer, as the man behind 71 top 10 country hits, as well as dozens of classic songs that are basically standards at this point. You could talk about his status as a cultural icon, the man who represents the spirit of outlaw country even more than the man in black, Johnny Cash who helped invent the Bakersfield sound, on how he, along with Cash, Willie Nelson, and other giants of the era, helped carve out a massive niche in the American cultural imagination. You could talk about his versatility and impeccability as a musician, the man who wanted to be known as, quote, the greatest jazz guitar player in the world that loved to play country and who melded gospel, blues, and roots to make his own signature sound. But as amazing as that Merle, the Merle you know and love through music is, today we're going to be talking about a different Merle. I want to tell you a story of Merle at the end of his life and his amazing final act on this earth. Over the course of his life, Merle made a name for himself as a criminal, went to prison, enjoyed decades of superstardom, and was married five times. Yes, those are just the bullet points. But as he approached death, with all these memories as hazy as California dust, Merle did something that even his most dedicated fans could never imagine. So buckle up, because today we're exploring a side of Merle Haggard I guarantee you're not familiar with. But before we begin, please hit that thumbs up icon to show support and subscribe to our channel for more episodes like this. But without further ado, let's go find out. What, what happened? happened? How did Merle die? Merle Haggard lived a fuller, richer life than most people can even dream of. He also had his fair share of troubles and hardships along the way. Nobody would have been upset if he decided to settle down and quietly retire, gradually fading away from the intensity of public life, perhaps somewhere near the dusty splendor of Southern California where his journey began. Or hey, maybe the Bahamas or something. The guy certainly earned it. But as you and I both know, Merle wasn't built for a quiet end. Historically, musicians have not been known for taking really good care of their bodies, and Merle was no exception. Once in 1983, in the deepest depths of his depravity, Merle Haggard bought $2,000 worth of cocaine and partied for five months straight. Of course, years of all this drinking, smoking, and sinning began to catch up with him when he was forced to undergo an angioplasty to unblock his arteries. But it wasn't until 2008 that Merle's health really began to impact his life. After what he thought was a routine checkup, he got a terrifying phone call. The doctor said he was diagnosed with lung cancer. For many musicians, this would have been an ideal place to call it quits. It had been 48 years since Merle left San Quentin a free man. 17,532 days had passed since Merle first realized that a life outside of petty crime was possible. Wasn't that long enough of a career? Why not take stock of what he still had and call it a day? Did Merle quit music? Now, many musicians find that over time, music itself becomes less of a passion and more of a burden. The richness of their art slowly fades as the reality of life of a touring musician sets in, and slowly the focus shifts from licks to lawyers, from tempos to ticket sales, from rockin' drum solos to boring documents. Look at Elvis in his last days, beaten down by drugs, mental illness, and too much fame for his own good. Do you see a free man? But that's not the kind of relationship Merle had with music. To him, performing was an escape from the harsh realities of the real world. From the very beginning, Merle learned he could avoid getting into bar fights by performing at the same very bars. As his career developed, music allowed him to travel the world to make a decent living, and to experience life at its fullest. But most importantly, it was a way to keep him out of trouble and enjoy the freedoms the world had to offer. 
Merle's good friend Johnny Cash was considered a rebellious ruffian for playing for the inmates at San Quentin. Yeah, Merle was there himself. This isn't to say Merle's time in the music industry was always or ever a carefree stroll, as he had the same struggles with drugs and alcohols that many of his peers did. He was certainly no stranger to the conniving machinations of devious suits. But even through all of this, Merle's heart was still in music. You can hear it in his live performances. Just check out his album Live from Austin, Texas, 85 and listen to the golden timber of the man's voice. Not knowing where I'm bound, no one to change my mind, but mama tried. That's the voice of a man who knows that singing is what he is meant to do. So jump back to 08, the jailer was once more coming back to knock at Merle's door. But this time, the jailer was Merle's own mortality. In November, he underwent surgery to remove part of his lung, an intense invasive procedure, certainly enough to end a career of a lesser man. But guess what? Merle Haggard was back performing less than two months after the surgery, returning to Bakersfield, California, the very place where the whole Bakersfield sound with the help of Merle had emerged. Merle was never the kind of guy who would take the freedom for granted. He vowed that as long as he still was standing, he would still perform. And that's what the guy did until 2015, and that's when everything changed. Did Merle predict his own death? By 2015, Merle was no stranger to bad news, so he wasn't surprised when he got some more. Now he was diagnosed with pneumonia. Again, a serious condition at his age, and it would have terrified many of his contemporaries. But Merle was less worried about his health and more about the fact that he'd have to postpone some concerts. But this time, it wasn't so easy to return to performing. The pneumonia came back, but worse, spreading to his other lung. And Merle was hospitalized. It seemed to be the beginning of the end for the tired old singer. But Merle had no intention of letting death take him unawares. What he did was nothing short of remarkable. With his family gathering at his bedside, Merle made a proclamation to his son Ben that he would die a week from that day on his birthday. Like Babe Ruth pointing to those far stands, Merle was calling his final shot. His son Ben said, you're crazy, nervously obviously. But Ben was very close to Merle and had spent years playing with Merle's band, The Strangers. He knew Merle didn't joke around about stuff like this. Still, nobody really has the power to predict their own death, right? Well, the day came, Merle's birthday. Ben prepared for a normal birthday for his dad, or as close as he could get. Merle was at his home in Palo Cedro. Ben and his family were excited for a bit of levity in such a dark time. But then they got the news. Merle Haggard had, in fact, died on his birthday. And with that, the last of the great singers of the 20th century had left this world. We'll never know exactly how Merle knew his time would end. It's possible, of course, he just got lucky. But something deep inside me tells me that the great old guitar god knew something. It's easy to see this story as mysterious, even mystical, but I don't think that's how Merle would see it. Merle's life was a lesson in accepting your limitations and making freedom of them. From his early years, living in an abandoned boxcar, he had made himself the one and only rebel child. From a family meek and mild, setting himself apart from his kindly but unambitious family. Years later, when his bad decisions caught up with him, Merle found freedom through music. And at his deathbed, with death near in pursuit, I think Merle found one last opportunity for freedom by choosing his time to go. When he passed, he was 79 years old. A long life, but too young an age for such a legend to pass. But then again, if Merle thought the time was right, who are we to disagree? What did Merle Haggard leave behind when he left? Besides dozens of classic hits, of course, it seems like quite a bit. Some unofficial estimates put his estate at an incredible $40 million at the time of his death. This is quite a staggering figure, especially because Merle wasn't known for being the most savvy businessman during his life. But despite a rocky patch in the 1990s, his career enjoyed a resurgence in the early 2000s, and his finances improved from there on out. 
Funnily enough, Merle also had a business venture in the works at the time of his passing that's very characteristic of the oftentimes controversial singer. In 2015, he partnered with the Colorado Weed Company. Now, his daughter and her husband are working with the company to develop a strain after Merle, who claimed that marijuana helped him keep up a rigorous touring schedule up until his death, over a hundred shows a year. So yeah, maybe the secret is in the strain of weed. Merle Haggard lived the kind of life you could write books and books about. To him, life was never a static thing. It was constantly changing, and he too had to change to keep up. Merle took up tons of political stances all over the spectrum based on what he thought was just. He explored dozens of music genres to perfect whatever he thought the perfect sound was. And he had no issue with getting a new wife. Jokes aside, I would love to spend a day with Merle Haggard or spend the day talking about Merle Haggard. There's only so much that words can do to explain the man. And at that point, you have to give up and put on one of his hit records. With that in mind, what are your favorite Merle Haggard albums? What song do you hear and it just transports you back to a simpler time? Is he your favorite outlaw country musician? Get in the comments and tell me all things Merle Haggard. But before you go, please hit the thumbs up icon, it really helps. Subscribe to our channel and come back often so we can keep telling you what happened.